Hello everyone, Creative Fun here back again with another Mirage tutorial. And this will be the third and final uh, segment of my simple bombing tutorial series. And in uh, this episode, we are going to uh, take a look at CCIP bombing. Now, CCIP bombing stands for Constantly Calculated Impact Point. And it means uh, uh, in difference with the CCRP bombing, uh, we are going to have a pipper telling us roughly where the bombs are going to land instead of uh, we designating a target and the computer telling us when to release the bombs. They're just going to tell us where the bombers, bombs are going to land and it's up to us to release them in time. Uh, so in this tutorial I am going to do four bombing runs, uh, two low level and two dive bombings and I'm going to use the TAS and the RS uh, modes respectively to show you how they work. Uh, now the first one we're going to use is the TAS which is the radar information or we use the radar to uh, give us uh, ranging information on where the bombs will land. Now this works both in flat terrain and in uneven terrain uh, which means it's a slightly more accurate than the radar altimeter. Uh, also you can see here we cannot use our radar when we have this mode activated. So the radar is inoperable uh, and we are going to proceed with the, the bombing run. Now I prepared some targets, uh, let's see right over here uh, next to this hill. It's a good uh, waypoint marker. So I'm going to drop down to low altitude and we're going to move in to, towards the targets. Now, of course, when doing a bombing run, either you need to have your INS or your navigation system set uh, for where the targets are, or you need to visually identify your targets. You need to know where your targets are, basically. Otherwise, uh, doing the bombing run is not very efficient. Uh, so we're going to drop down here. I'm going to raise my share a little bit. It makes it a little bit easier for me to see the ground. And you want to be between uh, 0.75 Mach and 0.85 Mach when you do this bombing run. And uh, we're also going to turn on our radar altimeter. There we go. And we're going to try to be around six, between six and 700 feet. Now we're going to zoom in here and get the visual on our targets. It should show up very soon. I have visual on them now. They're very hard to see. They're uh, camouflaged, of course. Uh, and we are at a good speed and a good attack angle. We're flying almost level here. And as soon as the peeper here passes over the target, I'm going to release my bombs. There we go. And we're going to pull up and see if we can spot targets. Ooh, I think we almost got one there, did we? Yes. So a pretty good hit. So I will call that a successful uh, bombing run. Now we're going to switch uh, the target mode or the radar mode to radar altimeter. This one and we're going to turn off the TAS and we're going to put our radar into silence. Uh, now the radar altimeter mode uh, only works first if you have the radar altimeter turned on and you can turn it on here. You can see here if I turn it on here immediately you get the little X there. I turn it, I turn it off and if I turn it on you know the X goes away. Uh, so of course uh, you need to turn this on. I totally forgot about this last uh, time I used the RS uh, in the first uh, tutorial. So that's very important that it, that it is on. Uh, second, uh, as this is more inaccurate, you might be wondering why should I ever use this? Well, there's a couple of uh, situations where using this might be advantageous. First of all, if there's uh, flat terrain like we have here towards our target, it is fairly accurate. So it will not affect uh, too much. I was uh, in previous times when I practiced this, I uh, managed to hit my targets both with TAS and RS. Uh, secondly, uh, there are many times when you don't want your radar activated. When the radar is on, of course, it will show up in other enemies' uh, RWR. Uh, so you will be more well, more stealthy. It's a very good thing if you're doing a low-level bombing pass and you want to be as stealthy as possible. Uh, turning off the radar will uh, help in that. It will make it more difficult for the enemy to know uh, which direction you're coming from and even that you are there. So we're going to align ourselves again towards the targets here and see if we can hit um, another truck. So once again, uh, we want to be around uh, six, five, six hundred feet and we want to be around uh, 0 0.8 Mach. So you 
locate visually a target you align yourself up and it's important that you keep this little line inside these brackets too to give maximum accuracy and we are going to drop the bombs there and then we're going to pull up and see if we uh, hit targets oh we went a little bit far there and uh, no worries i probably was a little bit late on the trigger Okay, let's see if we cannot hit that truck uh, using our dive bombing procedures. Now, to line yourself up for dive bombing, you want to be around uh, seven to ten thousand feet. So we're gonna climb a little bit here, and uh, I've already switched back to the TAS mode. I'm gonna do TAS first, and then the RS. And as I mentioned earlier, right before I released the bombs uh, previously. Um, you want this uh, line here to be uh, in between the brackets here for the highest degree of accuracy. Uh, one other thing uh, is that if you get a big X pairing here, that's the uh, computer advising you not to release the bombs. You can still release the bombs and depending on uh, uh, your speed and angle you can still be fairly accurate uh, so you don't always have to listen to the big giant X telling you not to release the bombs but it's a good indication that you're a little bit off on your uh, bombing run so we're gonna line ourselves up here and we are around 9,000 feet which is not too bad so when I do uh, dive bombing maneuvers in Mirage, I use the same tactics as I do with the MiG-21. I lined up my targets around here, and then I just roll into the targets and try to align the pipper on the targets, which we're going to do right now. So rolling, uh, going down, pulling back on the brakes. Uh, we want to be below Mach 8.5 or 0.85. We're gonna locate the target there and we're gonna see if we can align our paper and release a little bit fast as you can see we've got the X there but uh, we should still be fairly accurate I think let's see what happens here Ooh. Uh, just a little bit short uh, but still fairly accurate in terms of a dumb bombing too bad I don't think the uh, truck is gonna blow up so we're gonna give it one more go uh, using the RS mode let's see if we cannot get this little bastard now we are in a 35 degree uh, turn let's see there dropping the bombs and pulling up so the people were spot on when we dropped the bombs let's see how accurate it actually is Ooh, ah, once again a little bit short oh wait no i think got it oh great and the truck is trying to drive away and there it exploded Perfect, so 244, four. that is actually not <laughs> not bad at all, considering there's like, tiny trucks and we're dropping dumb bombs. Uh, so I'm pretty satisfied with those bombing runs. We're gonna just go a little bit low past here and have a look at the carnage we just did. So of course, going for trucks or soft targets, uh, you're much better off using your guns and rockets uh, than bombs. But I think I demonstrated quite clearly how to be accurate uh, while bombing with the CCIP bombing mode. As you can see here, we uh, threw quite a lot of bombs in his direction and uh, those, those two trucks are burning. And we've got one lucky truck over there, not burning. So that's it for this tutorial and uh, the simple bombing tutorial series. Thank you so much for watching and if you found this useful, uh, please uh, leave a like and maybe consider subscribing. And if you have your own uh, good procedures for commencing good bombing runs with Mirage, please uh, leave a comment below and tell me about them so I can try them out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I see you guys soon in the next video.